Evogen, you're about to be cut down to size. Is that so? Because I would pay good money to watch you try. Not so much by me this time, but by your own sources. Oh, well my goodness. Because for the entire duration that you've been saying that you were going to cut me down to size or pwn me, and as many times as you've said it, I'm still waiting. You cited Wickerts and Johnson, among others, for definitions of heritability. But neither they nor any of your sources define heritability in the peculiar way you do. That's so. Even though I've quoted them verbatim, and as if your definition of heritability is any better? On an 80-20 model, if the environment for blacks and whites were equalized, then you'd expect the gap between them to narrow by about 20%. In quoting them, you invoke their authority without grasping the meaning of their words. So here's how this is going to end for you, Evogen. You're going to be refuted directly by the experts you've quoted. Gasp. And it looks like I am still going to have to wait because you're going to sit here and drone on about how I'm going to be refuted? And when I say directly, I mean just that. Oh, I know exactly where this is going, and boy do I have a surprise for you. You see, I've been in contact with J.M. Wickers. He knows who you are, and he's about to put you in your place. Okay, so what you're saying is that he watches my YouTube videos, but never comments or offers any sort of input? Because see, this is where we get closer to the surprise. Because if J.M. Weikerts does actually watch my videos, then yes, he knows who I am. He's familiar with my work. And if you've introduced me to him, then you're introducing my content to a guy who has absolutely no background on our little exchange. In which case, claiming that he knows who I am isn't accurate at all. Your credibility on issues of heritability, such as it was, won't survive this video. I assure you neither will yours. And as we'll see within the next 15 minutes, your attempts to discredit me are about to go up in flames. This might come off as a bit forward, but you have very attractive legs. So this is the message that I sent to J.M. Wickards. I used your own citation and used your own words. This was his response. Quote, I am not familiar with any peer-reviewed paper in which Evogen's interpretation of heritability is subscribed to." Close quote. Yes, and I'm sure that that is all you were really looking for, that Evogen is wrong. However, if we kind of look at what Weikert's response says, the, it's not like you have two types of IQ scores which are either 100% genetic or 0% genetic and that 75% of the population is of the first type. Now, explain to me where I claimed that such was the case. Because saying that we ascribe 75% of the variation to one force over the other doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as one is 100% genetic, the other is 0% genetic. That's not what I was saying, and you can't break down the developmental causes of the scores from heritability like that. Nor was I claiming that you could. Saying that we attribute 75% of the variation to genetics is not saying that it's caused by 100% genetics, nor is that the same as saying that 75% of the population get 51% or more of their intelligence from their genes. See, the thing is, we don't know how much of your genes or your environment contributes to the trait in question. Because talking about the genetic input and the environmental input that lead to the formation of a trait is not the same as analyzing the environmental and genetic input that lead to the variation in groups of people. Now see, the fun thing is that I've stated multiple times, and I thought I was rather clear when I stated that heritability does not refer to individual development, or taking a subsection of individuals and attributing their development to that. I guess not, though. Now see, here's where the surprise comes in, because I've also taken the time to email both Johnson and Weikerts, and I took the time to explain who I am, who you are, and what I believe actually happened. And I took the time to explain to them that they had perhaps been misled and are now being misrepresented by a white nationalist. And since you're comfortable with dropping your own docs, then I guess I don't have to hold this next part back. 
If you do a Google search of your name as revealed by your email address on your blog as two words in quotations, we can see that you have a much more extreme view than you do on YouTube. And I told them how to find that. Your name comes up in a number of Ayn Rand sort of websites and Randian objectivist websites, and apparently you're too extreme for them. As of yesterday morning, I've had correspondence with both Weikert's and Johnson. So, while I don't disagree with any of Weikert's email to you, and wouldn't have a week ago, you presented both him and Johnson with a quote mine, while explaining nothing of yourself and simultaneously forgetting to give them your definition. According to Johnson, my definition of heritability is still quite accurate. The phenotypic variants that we can attribute to genotypic variants. According to Johnson, the only thing that I'd defined incorrectly was the term variance. But where I was going wrong with that was attributing that to population numbers and distribution. Apparently you can't do that. Because variance as used in statistical measures and sample distribution refer to two different things. Now, I'm yet to take statistics, but I'm familiar with other aspects of population genetics, like the Hardy-Weinberg equations, which are a means of estimating the number of homozygotes and heterozygotes in a population sample in which the numbers are directly relevant to the sample size itself, as well as the range of variation. So there's at least a basis for my mistake. So now, when we're talking about variance, we're talking about the potential range of scores and the variation therein. 75% of that variation we can attribute to genetic information. 25% of that we can attribute to environmental variation, if IQ has a heritability of 0.75. So once I'd offer the correct version of what it is that I was saying to Wickerts and Johnson, and gave them a bit more background as to what was going on, told them more about you, linked to your video, they acknowledged that I'd clarified things, offered a correction the term I got wrong, which isn't what you were claiming I'd gotten wrong, gave me a paper and sent me on my way, both of them saying that they wished to absolve themselves of our exchange. So, in terms of destroying my credibility in terms of what heritability means, I was only slightly off about one relevant term. In which case, we're not really talking about people when we're talking about variation. We're talking about the variation between whole scores. And we're not talking about percentages of the sample, but percentages of the range of variation. That doesn't invalidate everything else that I've been saying, and it doesn't invalidate any other point that I've made. And it sure as hell doesn't make you right. And it doesn't invalidate anything else that I've said about heritability so far. It still cannot be applied across the board, regardless of what sample you're using. Estimates derived for the general population cannot be applied elsewhere. Samples derived for subsections of the general population cannot be applied to the general population as a whole. And things like directional, adaptive, and negative selection, as well as divergent evolution, reduce genetic variability and thus reduce heritability estimates. And environmental variability and input can also reduce heritability estimates still. It is again, like I've been saying, a population level estimate of the portion of the range of variability in a trait that we can attribute to genetics, and does not apply to individuals, nor does it account for development in individuals, or development in groups of people, only what we attribute a percentage of the range of variation to. Even if everything I said was wrong, that again does not make you right. I mean, it sure as fuck does not validate anything that you've said. And that said, I was still pretty fucking close to the mark. But, even if I can still be accused of not knowing what heritability or variance means, then I was still a hell of a lot closer than you fucktards have ever been. And, trust me, the reason I keep saying this is about to be very, very relevant. In short, though, I'm human, I'm bound to make mistakes from time to time, and when you claim that everything I say contrary to your position is wrong, go figure that I might at least be slightly wrong about something, at least every once in a while. However, even other scientific YouTube channels who don't participate in the race discussion still get things wrong from time to time. As Power in 1985 put it, it's not as though we have this crack team of academics scrutinizing our videos before we upload them. And while we usually do our best to prevent mistakes, sometimes the odd one does get through. The problem, though, is that you didn't even catch my mistake, nor did you correct it. A couple of academics whom you lied to and were initially convinced that I'd said something else completely different were the ones who caught it and corrected it. He gave me permission to quote his email, and I'm sure he would be willing to confirm its veracity for you if you want to contact him yourself. Been there, done that, but thank you though. And it wasn't because I doubted his veracity or the veracity of the email, but your veracity. But you might want to first demonstrate some basic reading comprehension skills. 
Oh, that's comical coming from somebody who doesn't even read many of the sources he claims support his position. As I pointed out in my prior series to you, you hadn't bothered to read the 1996 APA meta-analysis on the North American racial IQ gap, the 2010 paper by Green et al., the 2010 paper by Hawks et al., the Descent of Man by Darwin, likely didn't read The Ancestor's Tale by Dawkins, didn't bother to watch but a few minutes of the debate between Suzuki and Rushton, and apparently hadn't bothered to read The Mismeasure of Man or a legitimate criticism of the book. For you, it's just part of the course to criticize or cite works you've never actually read or viewed for yourself. So that you don't, again, misconstrue and misrepresent what J.M. Wavers and other experts are saying about the basic concepts you're struggling with. Consider the source, bitch. He suggests the book, Behavioral Genetics, co-authored by Robert Plowman. If you still can't grasp what heritability and other core concepts in the field mean after reading this introductory text... Oh, so then you've got a copy of the book and you've read it for yourself. Then cite for me the entire first line on the third page. I mean, if you, this isn't more of your dickless positioning and you actually have the intellectual high ground, then that should be something that you're able to do. Because you've actually got a copy of the book, you bought it from Amazon or somewhere else, and you've read it. If you're just talking out of your ass and using someone else's book recommendation to justify it, then none of those words that you've just spoken mean anything. Then any further efforts by Wickerts, or Fringe Elements, or Libertarian Realist, or any of your mentors to teach you what heritability means will probably be futile. Actually, I'm pretty fucking offended that you even bothered to say this, because the implication is that while the experts have to go through years or even decades of hard work to be considered experts, you're somehow on the same pedestal. And you don't, because you've spent X number of years on Google and Wikipedia spouting the same bullshit over and over and over again. You haven't done any of the necessary hard work, or attained the necessary education, or field experience to call yourself, or compare yourself, to an expert. This isn't about getting to the truth of the matter for you and fringe elements, as much as it is for, say, Wickards and my mentor. You see, you have a vested and emotional interest in the outcome of this discussion, this debate. Because, as we've seen, you have this tendency to accept, reject, and flat-out ignore source material if it doesn't support your prior conclusion. You've even ignored where I've pointed out that papers you've cited or claimed to have read contradict your conclusion. So, there's nothing I can learn from you. And this is even assuming that you're knowledgeable about certain topics, and as we've seen, you're not. Oh, and I hardly call being slightly off struggling. What I would call struggling, however, is defining heritability to mean something relevant to the development in individuals. On an 80-20 model, if the environment for blacks and whites were equalized, then you'd expect the gap between them to narrow by about 20%. And heritability wouldn't tell you that. Or, of course, trying to shoehorn an interpretation of your prior definition into the actual definition. So, let's rewind back to a previous part of your video, where you exposed your grossly ignorant definition of heritability. You know, the one you failed to give to Wickards and Johnson? A heritability of 0.75 could result from all individual IQ variances being 75% genetic and some being more and some being less. So, what do you think Weikerts would have to say about your definition here? In the parts of the email chain that you did show, I didn't actually see you giving him that definition, and yet that's the way you've been defining heritability for about the last year or so. And given a number of the things that you giggled at in the end of your video, you appear to still seem to believe that that is the case. But I have a feeling that had you done that, you wouldn't have been so open with showing your email and Weikert's email. Nor would you have had the mendacity to say this. Either you can comprehend the words, proportion of phenotypic trait variants that can be attributed to genetic variants, or you can't. But for all of your lies, flagrant stupidity, and cowardice, what I find to be the most glaringly obvious in your video, besides the fact that you attempted to lie about the definition you personally have been using, and the one that I've been using, is the fact that you don't appear to have a genuine understanding of what it is that Weikerts and Johnson told you. You just quoted them verbatim when you criticized anything I had to say about heritability, and made it sound as though it was something you'd been saying all along claiming that you'd always been arguing for that, and claiming that, well, uh, this is what we've been trying to tell you. No, it's not. You're a fucking liar and a dumbass. But given your blatant lying to Wickards and Johnson, and your simultaneous refusal to be cut by your own double-edged sword, we can add coward to the list of things that you are. Your actions discredit you more than they do me. But, Brad, if you genuinely want me to wish harm on you, though, 
I hope you have mutant alleles of BRCA2, P53, and Huntington, and that you get infected with Ascaris lumbricoides and Vulcan Colus metanensis. Pro tips for the future. First of all, don't ever assume you have the upper hand on me. Ever, you piece of shit. Second of all, if you're going to challenge me to a knife fight with a spoon, make sure that you don't lie to others and tell them that you hit me with a shovel.